And I also find it interesting that she is so opposed to this cover of a man in a dress on Vogue, yet in the entire history of Vogue, there have only been five black women on the cover. This is Dee and this is The Come Up Straight Up. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Well, guys, I am back, back, back. And this video is going to focus on Candace Owens and her recent comments about Harry Styles, the singer, wearing a, a dress on the cover of Vogue. I'm going to give you my thoughts on her comments about both masculinity and femininity and whether or not she is ultimately a, a friend or foe to those of us who are, who are hypergamous and feminine. But before I get into all of that, please, please, please do not forget to subscribe. Subscribe to this channel, you guys, and do not forget to turn on those notifications so you are aware whenever I upload a great a new video just like this one and subscribe to my second channel, Pretty and Things and Hey. Turn on the notifications for that one as well. So you guys, let's get right into it. This is a Candace Owens. Candace Owens is a, an author, a, a political commentator, as well as a right-wing political activist. She is a staunch supporter of uh, Donald Trump. And, um, you know, a very sort of polarizing figure for a lot of people. Let me give you just a little bit of background on her. She was born, uh, she's 31 years old. She was born in Stamford, Connecticut. Her parents divorced and she was actually raised by her grandparents. Although she is critical and does not support the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. She was ex highly critical of George Floyd, calling him a, not a good person. She doesn't support um, feminism. She does not support the, the Me Too movement. She does not support uh, abortion or welfare. She, interestingly enough, was the victim of um, a racial hate crime when she was in high school. She went, uh, she's from Stanford, Connecticut, and her family sued the Stanford School Board, and they were awarded um, like $38,000 as um, a result of these uh, racial harassment incidents. Ironically, among the places that she has worked is a Vogue magazine. Candace became famous in 2017 for her YouTube channel and her viewpoints, her very conservative viewpoints in support of Donald Trump and uh, against the Democratic Party as well as feminism. Now let's get into the controversy. Over the course of the last two days, Candace has tweeted her dismay, her actually how appalled she is by the cover of Harry Styles Vogue magazine in a dress. And also throughout the photo spread, there are a number of pictures of, of him in, shall we say, traditional female garb. She described that cover as the steady feminization of our men and her cry is to bring back masculine men. She said there is no society that can survive without strong men. Bring back manly men. Her comments created a firestorm of a controversy which she responded to today by basically doubling down on what she said. 
She said, since I am trending, I'd like to clarify what I meant when I said, bring back manly men. She wrote in her response to the backlash on Monday, I meant bring back manly men. She also said that she is impervious to quote unquote woke culture. In response to her support of bringing back masculine men and just masculinity in general, she also supported femininity. She said, wait until they find out that I also think women should be feminine. And I enjoy cooking for and taking care of my husband. Now let's unpack that. Now, you know that this is a channel dedicated to hypergamy and femininity. I support, I fully support those concepts. This woman does not come from a privileged background. She worked and she positioned herself to have a hypergamous life. Last year, Candace married Peter Farmer, whose father is a Lord Farmer. Uh, he comes from a very aristocratic, wealthy family. They are expecting their first child next year. Firstly, I have to give credit where credit is due. This woman is an example of the come up. She did not allow the circumstances in which she was born to hold her back. She did not allow her past to dictate her present she is she was also open to dating men of different races because her dating pool was wide she cast a a, a large net she was able to attract a, a millionaire a british millionaire i also happen to agree with her high level viewpoints on traditional gender roles. I believe that the, the shift from traditional gender roles has come, has contributed to essentially the, the destruction of the black family. And we all know that 80 to 90% of black children are raised by single mothers. The absence of the black father has resulted in poverty and violence and limited opportunity for black children. It has created this baby mama culture. So I would be a hypocrite if I said I did not support her position in theory on a high level, but it's how she frames it. It's the undertone of homophobia. And I also find it interesting that she is so opposed to this cover of a man in a dress on Vogue, yet in the entire history of Vogue, there have only been five black women on the cover. In some respects, I understand how a woman who is feminine and you know embraces and dwells in her femininity might look at the cover of Vogue with a side eye. Harry Styles is actually the first man, the first man to be on the cover of Vogue, the first solo man, and here he is wearing a dress. So while I don't particularly have an, an issue with it, I do understand how more traditional people might be bothered by the imagery. I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying I understand it. I also agree about the you know, feminization of men to some extent. That feminization has led to women supporting men and men not supporting their family. But a feminine woman knows that often it's not what you say, but how you say it. And there are times when you shouldn't say it at all. 
Examples of effeminate women within the political arena include Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama is a classy feminine woman. Another example is Ivanka Trump. Ivanka Trump, you say whatever you say about her, but she exudes femininity. But I look at Candace and I, I can't help but wonder why. What does she hope to gain by putting herself in this position? She always has something negative to say. Prior to this incident, she picked a fight and got into this huge controversy with Cardi B saying that she was a puppet for Joe Biden. Like, why is she always at the forefront of these controversies? Why is she creating this sort of image for herself. She's supposedly a feminine woman who believes in femininity, and yet she has assumed this very aggressive masculine role. Like everyone else, she is entitled to her opinion and her viewpoint. But a feminine woman knows that you can be pro something without being anti something else. Her definitions of both masculinity and femininity are just very superficial and very short-sighted. A masculine man is defined by how he carries himself in this world. A masculine man is, as I've said before, a protector and provider. A masculine man loves women and respects women. And while I personally would have no desire for a man who wears dresses, clothes do not make the man. A black woman with such a high profile and such a big platform can do, could do so much good for black women, all women, uh, all women, but particularly black women who are frankly learning about hypergamy. Instead of being this sort of beacon of hope and inspiration, she has chosen to use her platform as a means to harm others rather than help. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up. And as always, I look forward to reading your comments. Um, please comment below because I, I would love to know your thoughts on this masculinity, femininity, this Vogue cover, and of course, Candace Owens. Please, please, please do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. So yeah, until next time. Mwah.